The Holdovers is directed by Alexander Payne and follows Paul Giamatti, who plays a high school teacher, but a teacher at like this high-end rich kid charter school. And he is selected to take care of the kids who are holdovers for the holiday season who aren't returning home to their families, which in the end really just becomes one student that he's stuck with. And now these two drastically different characters are forced to coexist together during a very emotional part of the year. So this really isn't my type of movie. I often find myself struggling with uh, overly sappy, emotional drama films, especially ones that are, you know, holiday centric. Typically, those don't work very well for me, especially ones as formulated as The Holdovers is, which is why I'm actually really surprised to say that I kind of adored this movie. And I think that's because there's just a certain level of like true, pure authenticity to it. There's no part of this movie that feels like it's trying way too hard to be sweet or heartwarming. It just naturally is that way. And also the look of the film is fantastic as this is kind of a period piece. I believe it takes place in the early 70s or yeah, it's like it takes place mostly in 1970, I'm pretty sure. And the look of the film really echoes a film of that time period. You just see that natural film grain and it just makes the film feel so much more real. Like it comes from a real warm and personal place. And there were times when I was watching this movie where I felt if this was a movie that came out in this time period in cinema like it could have possibly become like a holiday classic over the years as for whether or not it will hold true as that now i don't know it's always really hard to say i wouldn't be shocked if this became a holiday movie people watched every year it's certainly a movie i wish i watched before christmas because and i already said this but i struggle with holiday films a lot of the time oftentimes i'm just like eh, this is a little too cheesy for me and and I, I like good camp and I like a cheesy stuff and whenever it's like kind of on a shoehorned hallmarky level, I can really almost despise it. But I think what this borders down to is not only a really great script that's just so simple and streamlined, but the performances are really great, especially Paul Giamatti. And that's the big takeaway from this movie that people are gonna say. And Paul Giamatti for me is kind of that actor I feel like I take for granted a lot of the time because every time he's in something, he adds a level of legitimacy to it, except for maybe The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but we won't talk about that. And here he he just fully embodies this strange character and it allowed me to look at Paul Giamatti in a way that I had never seen him before and I didn't know he was capable of becoming and he really tackles this character perfectly who is sort of an older curmudgeon that really has something true at his core despite how simple and I hate using this word in this context but cliche a lot of this movie is it's told with a lot of dimension a lot of layers and it just feels really real and legit and the relationship that paul giamatti shares with this young boy character throughout the movie reminded me of some of my favorite movie friendships so by the time the movie started having these big emotional moments and these payoffs to certain things it just felt earned to me because the movie took the time to massage its characters and to let the story naturally build to a certain place. As far as criticisms go, I don't have that many. I mean, there is the criticism that you have high school kids played by very obvious adult actors, which is a long running issue that has been going on in film for a very long time. I just feel like we've slowly gotten better at it. And now we kind of have that issue that I feel like we would have had if this was a movie that came out in 1970. But the performances are well enough that you just are able to look past it because the material is really good. Also, while I do really enjoy this script, in fact, I think it's a great script overall, it does get a little repetitive with its, like, uh, setups and payoffs within dialogue. It's maybe a little too over-reliant on callbacks to earlier lines. And while some of those work well and are kind of funny in the moment, there are other times where it's like, oh, you already called back to this and you're kind of calling back to it again and again. And it's, it's losing its steam at a certain point. But that doesn't change the fact that I thought this was a really lovely movie. And it honestly just, it, it's really kind of the feel good movie of the year in my opinion. And I had heard a lot of really good things about it from some other critics that I really look up to and enjoy. I've, I've also heard some more mixed things about it. So I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this movie going into it, but really like, I think this is one of the best movies of the year. It kind of reminded me why certain tropes are overused. It's because whenever they're used appropriately, they're really effective. And to see this sort of conventional, emotional Christmas drama just done so excellent with so much craft to it, 
I thought was really refreshing and I was just so happy after this movie. And even with a lot of my favorite movies of the year, I can't say that I was genuinely happy after the viewing of it. So like, yeah, I, I really loved The Holdovers. And I'm actually gonna give it a really high rating because of that, just because across the board, this kind of executed what it was going for essentially perfectly. So I, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. I love this movie.